Yo, what it do, man? This is Grindface and a therapist, man. I'm Demetrius. And I'm Samir. We've been together for 28 years, 23, 24, but who's counting? Who's counting? But on this episode is 18, episode 18, and we're going to get on the topic of building. So, Samir, start us off on building. What are we talking about? Building blocks, building houses, building relationships? What, what, what is building? I don't stop. I want this to be 17. But this is 18. Building. What was your question? Well, what are you we talking about on building? Building anything, building a relationship, building a friendship, building a business, you know, the fundamentals, the fundamentals of the foundation. I don't think many times when people start to build, they think of that. You know, let's say you're building a house, right? You got to you have a strong foundation. You got to have yeah, a strong foundation, know, right? right? But what materials are you using in that foundation? I think many times we start because we're looking at the end goal, but we're not realizing if the foundation is not sturdy, it's not going to last. So what makes a, a strong friendship, building a strong foundation in friendship? Like it going through rough times, going through drama, going what builds a, a strong friendship? Keyword friend, right? How are we defining or how are we deciding who's a friend and who's not? What have they shown us to say they're a friend? And that's all about the foundation. Because many times you could take someone on as a friend, finding out later their characteristics are not really characteristics of a friend. So the, the foundation is already faulty. Does that make sense? I mean, but you got to go through situations and by 10, by then no, you, you don't. probably invested no, into you that don't. person. No, you don't. I believe in, this is a thing. People always feel like they have to go through something to see character. But no, all you have to do is see what they do to other people. Okay, true. If they shady you, Some stuff you're not going to get a chance to do to me. Because I'm going to see how you and treat other people. But they might have a good reason to stab the other friend in the back. There's never a good reason <laughs> to stab somebody in the back. They're like, there's no justification for that. Okay, so what about a relationship? How what's this? How you build a strong foundation in a relationship? Somebody you start dating. Um, what what makes it? You know, I got a whole book on that. But if you if you asking me here and right now, I mean, shit. I'm talking. The people want to know, but not, <laughs> not me. I mean, shit. <laughs> I mean, but if you ask if me here and right now, same principles apply in everything. You so know, the character, same character, character. What are what? Okay, this is the thing. Sometimes we want something so bad, or we like something so much that we overlook things that are very telling, right? But you don't think people could change? I think anybody can change. Anybody's capable of change. The question is, do they want to change? Because, you it's know, like in a relationship, you might get with somebody in your last relationship, that person just, it wasn't, y'all was like, oh, you're on, on water, and it just didn't mix. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I feel like some people could bring the best in you, and some people could bring the, the worst out of you. You know what I'm saying? So you can't, I don't think you could hold a person accountable who they are about the shit they did in that last relationship. That person is probably was an asshole. Okay, so let's say someone cheats. Let's just say someone cheats and the person cheats back, right? Does that make them a bad character? I mean, person. That's not what I'm saying. But in when you see a overall character, right? Integrity, who a person is. Like, okay, this person was in a relationship, right? And they may have disrespected their partner in front of someone else after feeling disrespected so long, right? That's an isolated incident. But if you have someone that in every relationship they have been a cheater, that's kind of like character. That's not isolated incident. So we're not talking about, you know, somebody may have had a blow up. But, in but a, you saying in every relationship there was a cheater, but what if in every relationship there was just weak women that allowed that so they let that person just felt like, hell, I'm going to keep doing it. 
until you know what I'm saying until he meet that right one and be but like hold on this sense. shit ain't gonna work and then because they at change. the end of the day he's the one that's choosing the weak women so why are you why are you choosing weak women so that that that's that's a question within itself because regardless if you feel like somebody's weak or not that doesn't mean oh just because you're weak I'm gonna go cheat on okay for example let's give a prime example right there's many a things you could do that you can get away with right. There was just a situation with insurance. Now, I could have basically, when my company got burglarized, I could have ran the bag up for insurance and maxed it out, right? No one would have known. I could have put whatever I wanted to put, right? They just wrote a check. But my integrity wouldn't let me do it. So you could say, oh, well, he kept getting with weak women. But that's just what you want to do because it doesn't matter who you're with. Either is you're doing it simply because you want to, not because you're with a weak woman. But in order to see some of integrity, you got to go through something to see. It's like putting it under pressure. Not necessarily true. You know, a lot of people say not what they're going to do true. until they end okay. the situation. Like, shit. Integrity speaks every day. How do you, how do you treat the, the waiter? You know, how do you, how do you handle situations when you become frustrated and mad? How do you, you know, entreat other people? All that, all that is a representation of you're showing a person your character. You know, I don't have to get into it with you to know like, hey, this person has a temper because I've seen him curse out 10 other people. It's a difference between an isolated incident. We all have a bad day or a moment. I ain't going to say a day. We all have a bad moment because I don't feel like I, I agree with my dad with this. He always says, you can have a bad moment, but if you have a bad day, it's a choice because you've allowed it to keep festering, right? I think we can all have a moment, right? But if every day is a bad moment or day, that's character. If every time I can get away with stealing, I'm I'm stealing, I'm a thief. That ain't a bad moment of, oh, it was, you know, misjudgment. No, you you like to steal. You like to cheat. You like to lie. You know, so there's a difference between, you know, they cheated once, but oh, as you would say, they just keep getting with weak women. No, that's you, you just want to be a cheater because it doesn't matter who's next to you. It's either you want to do it or you don't. Okay, so let's say you pass the honeymoon stage and all that. You know, if people don't know what the honeymoon stage is, you got to um, Google it. Um, so they pass the honeymoon stage. And so how do they build, start? Because you're taking two individuals and coming together. Now, how do they start building towards togetherness? I think by getting to know one another, you know, asking questions about goals, you know, family dynamics, you know, even child trauma. People have a hard time with really asking people real questions. People like superficial conversation. But if you ask superficial questions, you're going to get a superficial relationship. You got to be honest and have real vulnerable conversations to really get to know this person. Yeah, I would think that would be done before the honeymoon stage. That would be like early, the first dating sections. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think you should. Well, I don't think you, you should be vulnerable you, uh, on the first date because you don't know this person. But I'm saying like y'all hit two, three uh, months. Two, three months. People start having feelings and, and no, then you start if you finding out feeling, the truth. Okay, you be scared. Me, you don't want to walk I away. See, like, listen, come on. I could see a kid having feelings or two or three months because as a kid, you could be with this person every day, but if you grown with a job with kids or not kids or stuff to do, how much time can you really I'm spend saying with like a person? The second or third date, um, you need to be vulnerable. Asking, asking, no, no, you, you should ask the questions. questions. No, 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 like, no, no, no. You should ask have, the questions. Have you, you sh- been abused? Have you been <laughs> okay? This? Like, hold on, nah. listen. You, you like, should shit. ask the questions, but I doubt if somebody on the second or third date is going to tell you their whole life history of being abused because. To be vulnerable, you have to be in a safe space. And even if I've only known you two or three dates, I'm not about to tell you my personal family dynamics and things I've been through, and I don't know you. You know what I mean? Yeah, but let's even go with that because let's go with some people have been together for like ten years and they don't they don't even know some of their partner's darkest history. It's like, don't you think that's like a result for fa- failure? No, I think they didn't do their homework in the sense of really getting to know one another. If you can't be vulnerable with the person you sleep to with every night, something is wrong. But I definitely think conversations need to be had and honesty needs to be had for you to even see who you're dealing with. You know, and I honestly think you should look at your the person you date and friend. People can say this and they say this is not true, but I really believe you attract what you are. Your friends are a representation of who you are. 
because if they weren't, and you didn't have anything in common with them, most likely you wouldn't want to be around them. And that's just a reality. I always say your family is by default. We don't get to choose what family we're born into, but your friends are handpicked. You pick these people. So by you picking them, you have to have something in common with them. True. I agree with that one. Because who want to hang out with their boring friends? You ain't got shit in common. So if you look at a woman or man's friends and you see their friends and it's like, it's not somebody you would want to be with, chances are they have commonalities. And I'm not going to say like one friend is just, you know, over the top. I'm saying a, a consistent theme of their friends. You can see a consistent theme of my friends. Their personalities are not all the same, no. But there's like a consistent theme of commonalities. Okay, we got the point on that one. So basically, um, coming together as one. as Your energy is low. I build, need you to. You know what I'm saying? Your energy is low. My energy? You trying yeah, to say yeah. my energy low? Yeah. Because you're saying the same shit over. It, your energy is low. Just rephrasing it. I got to carry you, the you podcast. Carry, my bad. You, you tiptoeing around the shit. You won't say like. Say like, what? What are you trying to get me to say? Of, of things. You're not saying the fool like. If you hang around hoes, nine times out of ten, you're a hoe too. You know what I'm saying? Let's stop sugarcoating the shit. That's you know not what, what I was saying? gonna say. Well, but if you wanted, we, but if you, but if you wanted, like, if you wanted to say that, say, say that. Like their friends out there ratchet, doing all this ratchet shit. You're out there, you enjoying the shit too. That's why they're your friends. You know, the, well, I don't the, mind. That's not what I was gonna say. I mean, it's a good example, but that's not what I was gonna say. But, but if you wanted to say on. it, you could say it. Um, so blending it. The coming when is like you dating this person, y'all past the honeymoon stage, you're trying to build. Why are we talking about dating? Building don't just have to be with dating. Well, 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 damn, this is the topic we on right now. Okay, building shit. We can switch it up to what? what? Building. Ask your question. Like, Ask your question. Where is this time to date? We start building as basically supporting the person you talking to dreams and passions and like that like you know let's let's talk about you dating somebody and he's an expiring inspiring rapper you know and it's like when do you tell him like man you need to go get you a job because this rapping shit ain't working and y- y- y'all y'all dating it was cute when y'all was in the honeymoon stage now it's like this is past serious. the foundation though you're already in a relationship if you to the point to tell him to go get a job well, it was cute in the, before the beginning. So you saying they fucked up? They should have put that down while they was dating? Like, you need real employment? Your dreams is not good? What? Let's be honest. Let's just let's just be real for a moment. In life, you need money, right? You need money to survive. Why? Because you need money to buy food. You need money for basic necessities. Shelter. Food. You need money, right? So for anyone as an adult, and you're not providing for your yourself. basic needs, then you shouldn't even want to be in a relationship with somebody like that. If they're not providing the basic needs for themselves. So that's not even realistic. It's like a rhetorical question. But it is realistic. <laughs> so then your energy is low. Because I'm Pick just looking at up. you like, <laughs> why is it real? Well, I, okay, I guess that is some people's realistic. situation. But to me, it's like you need to ask yourself, if this person cannot provide or I don't even say cannot because you go get a job anywhere. If a person is not willing to provide the basic needs for themselves, why would you want to try to build with them? I agree. That's like I a agree. real question I'm asking anybody that's and, listening. And if a guy a does not want to provide a basic need for himself or a woman, why would you want to be with him? That is that because you need money to survive for your basic needs in the real world. And if you're not even willing to do that for yourself, I know you're not going to be willing to do I it be- for me. I, I believe that's the first red flag and first wrong step you 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 move in with somebody is if when you see they don't want to they don't have the desire to put their self in a better position hold on but people say they got like some people say you know they hustling or they make money but when you're a responsible adult you can have hustles but at the same time you need something consistent until that hustle picks up disagree on that 
as a hustle, you cool. When I say a hustle, you need, as as a grown man, if you have kids, you need something. I, I say you need some kind of employment. Your hustle is not going to do it. But if you're just providing for yourself, your hustle is cool. It's just you 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 providing for yourself. But when you start putting kids in the situation, we're talking I believe, about building. We're we yeah, talking you, about building. So when you building, you're not by yourself. It's another person involved. So no, your hustle is not okay. Building what? That's a good question too. The conversation needs to be: Are you getting? This you is, might be trying to be build a drug empire. I don't know. I'm talking about in a relationship. So, I think a question should always be: What are the expectations? What's the end goal? Because many times people are like, oh, we just gonna we just gonna date and see where it goes, and that's just like telling somebody to get in the car without a roadmap. No directions. Yeah, I did not do that. Yeah, like, so let's just jump in the car and let's just drive. Okay, well, where are we going? That's how you get pulled over and go to jail. But that's just how you end up nowhere, just seeing where things go. I think you should always be dating to marry, dating to have sex, dating to go on, whatever. I don't think you should be dating to have sex, but if that's what you want to do, do it. But what I'm saying is you know what the goal is when you're entering into this agreement. You know what the contract reads. This This is our agreement. To whatever we're doing. Some people got it, got their um, objective. Because some people be like, I'm going to get pregnant by him. Them some gold diggers. They already got the whole game plan ready. What? This is all. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm saying some people don't. They know exactly what they want and going to get what they want out of it. But that's not an agreement. That's somebody with an ulterior motive. Most, most everybody got ulterior motives. Everybody? Yeah. You, well, you what's your there, ulterior motive? My ulterior motive was to get you pregnant. That was your ulterior motive? And did you get pregnant? Not the, No, not when you were trying to. <laughs> so, no. I'm going to lock you down. And where are you at now? Locked down. But, um, so let's go be, <laughs> building that. Um, you have people thinking. <laughs> building a, build, building really a business. You. you know, building a business. And, and a lot of people feel like, like success happened overnight. Which is so... Funny to me. I think you know people don't understand the, the when habits. you have when you're building a business. If I go and I have a nine to five job, I clock in. When I clock out, I go home. I'm done for the day or eight to five. Right? I'm done for the day. When you have a business, there is no clock in and clock out. Every issue that arises, every problem that arises, every fire that occurs. You're putting everything out. So you're nine times out of 10 when you're in the building stage, you're wearing like 20 hats. So you're doing multiple things. So Every you're time. working. Every I would say time. I work probably way more than 40 or 80 hours a week for sure. I'm hard at giving up control. That's you're not a relinquish control. Because yeah. people just don't do shit right. That's my problem. I had that problem for a long time and I had to let it go. So basically, I do everything. I got a few help here and there on a couple pages, but shut your damn dogs up. But go ahead. But in order to build, you're going to have to relinquish control at some point. I had to learn that. My thing is I'd rather do something. If I got to wait on somebody to do something, I'd rather do it because I know it's going to be done and I know it's going to be done right because I know what I want to get done. And I, for a long time, I had a problem with that, but I understood to go faster and further, I had to relinquish control and give up and assign things that I can do, but don't necessarily have the time to do. So when building, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you have to trust um, the people around you to help build. And, And the key thing with that is having the right people around you. Yes, you all, you need the right people to take you to the next level. I agree with that. Yeah, because son, I, I heard Oprah said it like she she said I I don't know everything, but I'm gonna hire the best the best in everything. I was like I totally agree with that because sometimes we we always feel like I'm gonna do it. I'm but you you're not the best at it, so why not just hire the best? Hire the, the best. best, and then having people that when your back is turned, it's really going to do what they're supposed to do. You know, having people that are serious about the mission and, and, and the the goal and what's trying to be accomplished. 
I think that's key because somebody can either make your ship sail or make it sink. So you got to know when building a foundation with a business that you have the foundation sturdy. And I think businesses, they say what, 90, I had to look it up, but it's a high percentage of businesses fail within the, what is the first two years or first five years. And being in business, I understand why, because there are certain things that you just can't plan for. And business is not something you can go learn in a classroom. You learn when you in it. Hey man, you need a coin on that one? No. I don't need anything. So let's go. Let's talk about building a marriage. Are you sleepy? Am I? No, I'm just high. You're not high. Are you sleepy? Seriously? No, I'm not sleepy. But um, let's talk about building a marriage. What's the key elements of building a strong, healthy marriage? First and foremost, communication. So many, so many healthy communication. So many things can be resolved based on. A conversation. Many times things escalate because a person is assuming someone is doing something that they're assuming that they're not doing. But if a simple conversation was to happen and take place, then the problem could be resolved. And I don't I- disagree with you saying assuming because sometimes the person do it that that shit they doing, they know what they're doing. But when you confront them, they're gonna try to say, oh. I didn't mean to do it like that. I'm not saying that they don't know what they're you doing what all saying? the time, but I'm saying if a conversation was to happen and even saying, I don't like when you do that, it could be resolved. You know what I mean? And I think with communication, because I don't argue. I remember I used to, when I was younger, ooh, my mouth was like, ooh, so I'm going to cut you with my words. But I don't. Yeah, she was very abusive. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you made me mad, my <laughs> mouth could be treacherous like I could really go there but I've learned you know when you get wiser that you don't have to argue and I know in therapy they teach you to fight fair I'm a firm believer that I'm a firm believer too to fight fair don't say shit that you don't mean no that's not where I'm going with that what I'm saying is I don't argue no more because I don't feel like you have to argue this is the thing. This is why people, most people argue because they want the person to agree. If you listen to a conversation when people are arguing, they're going back and forth because they're trying to get the other person to change their mind and agree with them. It's like, but you don't see what I'm saying. Just because I understand you what you're saying. Okay, babe. I the, agree with you. No, I agree to disagree. I, I agree okay, to babe. disagree. I don't have to agree with you. Okay, babe. And to me, if you agree with everything your mate says, that's a hun- unhealthy relationship because somebody is a doormat. Somebody is a people pleaser. And I think we don't have to agree. We just have to respect each other's viewpoint. Mm-hmm. I can understand it, but I don't have to go along with what you're saying. And I think that, promote because I don't argue no more. I don't even like to be mad no more. And you know I don't. Okay, I'll be. <laughs> Quit. <laughs> well, trying to be I'm funny. Choosing. I'm being serious. <laughs> because I don't see the point of being mad and argue. Like, I don't argue. So then you do be trying to be right. You kill that shit. You be trying to uh, put your point out. And if you don't agree, you don't agree. Tell me when I have basically argued or went on. I don't. You and your son go on and on with religion. I'll be like, there they go. Who? You and Papa. We're not arguing. Y'all don't call it. Y'all call it trying to prove. He's y'all, telling y'all me both his trying point. Trying to prove y'all point. No. He, it's a no, point no, no. proving it. Y'all going listen, back and forth. That's trying listen, to prove a point. Listen. Everybody want to be right. Listen. There's only one person going to be right. He's telling me his viewpoint. I'm telling me, I'm telling him mine. And then I let it go because he's not going to change my mind. And I'm not going to change his. So we agree to disagree. We may go five minutes talking about it. And then after that, the conversation, because you're trying to make it seem like it was a long, drawn out. He had his views. Five minutes too long. See, no, I not necessarily. Gonna, I ain't even going to waste two minutes on it. But it, Ten but, seconds. But you're, okay. I'm just going to say, okay. You're, you're, you're describing a conversation as an argument. People tell me about their religion all the time. I had somebody tell me a whole spill about that. I didn't agree with anything they were saying, but I listen, right? So when he's talking, I'm listening because I'm also learning as I'm listening. Not that I'm agreeing with what he's saying, 
But a conversation, people think because there's two opposing views that it's an argument. No, it's dialogue. It's a conversation. And that's the same thing with two people just yelling at each other. It's a dialogue. <laughs> no, Shit, it's, it's a conversation. <laughs> no, it's not. What makes now, it an argument? Because the you, tone of their voice? Because if you, totally well, disagree. it's a difference if you're passionate. Because when I'm passionate, I get elevated. I get, you know what I mean? But I'm not arguing. I'm passionate. So what's, what's the When there's fine line? anger behind the tone, when there is disrespect but who okay disrespect with the, you I know what i mean that, but, but anger you you could a tone of, well yeah you, you can be angry like, i take that back because you do have the right to be angry it's not the emotion it's the action behind the emotion so if you're angry and you're expressing your feelings in a respectful manner there isn't anything wrong with that but if you angry and then you become disrespectful that's the problem because you can have any conversation as long as there's no disrespect when there's disrespect that's when the conversation has to end. So if you have a so community, once you say disrespect, enter the chat. It's a it's a it's argument. a wrap. It's, it's, it's an argument okay. because now you're hitting below the belt. Now you saying demeaning things. You should never want to. You should never want to tear down your mates. You should always want to build them up. You know what I mean? And so if you feel yourself getting to that point, you should just shut up. So you think as um, you go below the belt. And days later, you think it's all fine, or is is there still gonna be them seeds planted? Oh, I think this. I think it's easier to beat up somebody and heal versus words that penetrates the soul because those that wound is gonna heal, right? It, I'm not saying you should beat up your. That, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is people don't understand there's power in your words, and when you speak those things into a person, they could be they could believe it. And it causes hurt and long-term effects in a relationship because if you keep saying demeaning things to your mate over time, they're going to start thinking what you're saying is true, even though you're probably saying it because you're throwing the worst thing at them just to win the fight in the argument, right? And because I you're hurt. that's fighting dirty. It is fighting dirty. That's why I don't believe in the whole therapy concept of fight fair. No, I don't believe you have to argue. I believe that we can have a conversation and we can agree to disagree respectfully. I think communication is okay as long as there's respect. Once there's disrespect, it has already went left. I don't have to agree with you. And I don't have to fight and argue with you. I could be, okay, babe, I see this is getting a little, let's table this for later. Yeah, you growing a whole lot because your ass used to follow me all around. Oh, I would. I would. Oh, please. It, it, you trying to go to sleep? Like oh, that's not going to happen. You think you about to go to sleep on this conversation? I pulled a silent treatment on her ass and she would not leave me the oh, fuck no. alone. Oh, <laughs> we, no. We, it's going... What? It's about to go down. This conversation is not over until I say it's over. Room to room and shit like, God damn. But that's a part of control too and oh, wanting man. to be heard and wanting someone to agree, Right. But once I've matured and got wiser, that's why I said you don't have to argue. If we have a disagreement and I say my spiel and you say your spiel and we don't agree, I know you well enough to know now, like, if you're set in a certain viewpoint, I'm, babe, I love you, hug you, kiss you, I'm done with the conversation. Because at this point, you're not going to change my mind and I'm not going to change yours. So to keep going back and forth, it's a pointless conversation then it is grounds for the conversation to go somewhere else. Sound like both of y'all stubborn. Yeah. So, you know, the, 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 so communication is one. So what's, what's next? Compromise. Oh yeah. I think that's very important to compromise because it can't always be about you. It definitely can't always be about you. You have to learn to basically be willing to do things that your mate wants or just, look outside of self when you come into a relationship or into a marriage it's not just you it's someone else so you have to sacrifice sometimes even things you don't want to do to you know come in the middle to meet your partner where they're at compromise is huge but I think honestly as a parent as a real parent because we know people can have kids that don't make them a parent I think as a real parent low blow no what I'm saying is there's people that have kids all the time and they don't sacrifice for their kids, but a parent, oh, yes. you're going to sacrifice time. You're going to sacrifice sleep. You're going to sacrifice fun. It's times I had my daughter at 16 where I didn't have fun because I had a baby. I knew I had to sacrifice time for her. It's certain things that I wanted to do, but I couldn't do. And I think that's what I'm saying. When you be, when you a real parent, 
you understand the definition of really sacrificing. And in marriage, it's a sacrifice. You're not, you're no longer just living for you. I agree with that. You got to know how to sacrifice. You got to compromise. So if you ain't sacrificing for your marriage and what you expected. It's not going to last. Because it comes one-sided. Yeah. The other, and the other person becomes. You get tired. They become what they call it, spiteful. Um, resentful. Resentful. They may go along they with it for a while, face, but, yeah. but they're going to resent you for certain things of not being able to, to, to do the things they want. And that's when you what happens years later, they blow up. And all of a sudden, you don't understand what happened is because they held this stuff in and gave you your way. But in reality, they didn't feel like they were living their life. So you bring that in, holding shit in. It, so it's, it's unhealthy. It's, it's unhealthy. It's like, unhealthy. Some people it's be unhealthy. like they, they do it just to avoid the, the argument. Unhealthy. Like they don't. You make it worse. And I'm going to tell you how you make it worse. When you hold stuff in, typically nine times out of 10, 10 times out of 10, you're going to say it. When you get mad, I don't, let me tell you something about me. When I get mad and you, you can attest to this. I get quiet. Attest. This is how, you know, when I'm going to get, when I'm mad, I'm silent because my mouth used to be so bad when I got mad. I don't want to say anything to hurt you. So I'd rather not talk to you. I'm not going to have a conversation when I'm mad because I'm that upset. So when people allow things to fester and don't say anything, it's going to come out when they get mad and they snapped and they had enough. And now the receiving end is offended because they like, where's all this coming from? When in reality, all you had to do was say it when it first happened. It could have been put in check when it first happened. So now I'm doing things that I don't even know I'm doing to you because you've never even said it was a problem. Oh, I agree. Agree, and they're just gonna keep doing it, and then you just get bigger, and it's like a snowball effect bigger and bigger, and just gonna be boom. Yeah, I've seen people it, it, where it's like time bomb. they they mad at they mate 20 years later, they want a divorce, and I'm like, hold up, you're wrong. No, they but have you ever told them? Well, no, okay, how could you get mad at somebody for doing something that they don't, they don't even know, know that they're about. doing? Yes. And I'm I'm big on communication. Like you always say, and the kids do too, as soon as somebody mispronounced my name, I correct them every time. They be like, why do you always do that? Because I'm telling you my boundary. And everything I do when I don't like something, you're going to know. I don't sit here and play games. I don't hold stuff in. I'm not going to backbite and be like, oh, this, I'm going to tell you to you. Okay, so you say everything. So let's talk about... Picking and choosing your battles. You know, I hear people say that a lot of times. Oh, sometimes it's not worth it. Sometimes, going to. You know what I'm saying? So you think that's a good thing to pick and choose what you're going to bring to a fight? I don't even say fight about just nitpick at I shit. I think you, you should pick and choose when it's like you just nitpicking at everything. You have something to say about everything. You know what I mean? And it's like, so then you got a question like, is it me or pick and choose your battles? For example, let's say, okay, the podcast you did, I was hot on 10. That wasn't the time and the place to do it. I had to pick and choose my battle. Yes, I was like on fire, but was that the time and the moment? No. And sometimes you have to use discernment or discretion, you know, when and when and where, or is this worth it? You know, is this, is it going to change anything? You know, you, but if it's something that's really bothering you, you should say it. Or wait till you get it private. I don't mm -hmm. think you should ever have a dispute in front of people. I'm, I feel like whatever you and your mate got going on should be behind closed doors. I'm a firm believer of that. I don't think people should know that y'all having a problem. If you having a problem, I think that's between you and your mate. You Amen. should never so, disrespect your mate or belittle your mate or blow up on your mate in front of someone ever. Because what you have just introduced them to is it's okay to disrespect your mate also. No, you get a coin on that one. Keep keep your shit private. All your good private. And what about what about like people down talking their mate to their friends and stuff like in the, in the heat of the moment? You think that that's a good thing? Like 
You know what I'm saying? James smacked you around, and now you want to go tell your friends he smacked me around and all this bad James shit. James shouldn't be smacking you around. All this bad shit he's doing. You, <laughs> you go back. James shouldn't be smacking you around. But this this is the thing, too, right? And this is why I say found it, foundation in friends, right? When my friends come to me with their stuff, they come, we have the conversation, it's done. I don't think about it two minutes later. I don't care about it two minutes later. I'm not going I'm not going to judge them and demean them 2 minutes later. Whatever they told me, we had that conversation and that was that. The problem happens when you have friends that you're telling stuff to and now they don't like your mate. So then it becomes a problem and they're repeating what you said. So when you go to someone, you should know you're going to someone that's going to give you sound advice for one. Two, where it's not going to go nowhere. And three, where now it's not a problem with your, they have a problem with your mate, which I think is like, to me, you just being a busybody and being in somebody's business because what your man do to you don't have anything to do with me. Then they and take it, it a step further and they got a problem with your mate and now they're trying to hook you up with motherfuckers. Well, I ain't never seen nobody do that. But I mean, is it possible? Yes. But so should you should you belittle, belittle your mate to someone? No. But I can understand how something happened and you probably telling them the story of what happened. But I think a good friend, a good friend, if they're asking for your advice, they should give you their advice. But they should also love you enough to allow you to uh, make your own decisions without pressure. But if you're calling me three, four times a week. Oh, yeah, I'm not listening like, no yeah, more. You know, I'm, well, that's, well, that's different. Like, so. That's different. That's different. That's different. If you calling me three or four times a week with the same problem, my next question to you is going to be, well, what are you going to do about it? Because at that point, I don't want to hear it anymore because obviously it's a reoccurring situation, right? So if you're not willing to change it, stop talking about it. I'm talking about where people in real life may have a disagreement. They may need to hear someone else or something like that. You know, that's different. But no, I, I don't think there should ever be a time that you should belittle your mate, even when you're angry, something y'all went through. You should tell the story, but I don't think you should demean your mate. I don't. I mean, I can't say what everybody else do or don't. Th that's a good question. Have you? Have yeah, well, I what? Belittle talk, me. Talk down yeah. about my mate? No. Well, I don't need to talk about my mate. Yeah, I was about to say that. You don't even, no, I don't even think you my, would. Yeah. That's not my type of conversation. But no, I don't think you should demean or belittle your mate when uh, telling your friend or a family member what y'all been through. Tell them the story. But, you know, don't ever make your mate look bad. This is my thing. Your mate is a reflection of you. So why would you want them to look bad? That's, look, that's the point right there. You know what I'm saying? It's like, would you want your kids to look bad? You know, those are your 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 kids. They're in somewhat a, a form of a reflection of you. So why would you want your mate to look bad? I don't know. Some people just, just sit, I don't know. Because some people be in a marriage and, and be low-key competing with each other. Well. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's like a, a, a competition. I don't. There's some weird shit out there. Just put it that way. It's, it's but some, that's not a team. That's not a marriage. That's the problem. It, that's they, not. That they didn't learn the part of sacrificing and compromise. Because this is the thing, right? It's so funny. <laughs> And like when you buy me stuff, I'm like, I bought it myself because it's coming from the same account, right? So you win, I win. I win, you win. It's in one household. So the what would the competition be? We both gain from each other's success, whether it's individually or collectively. So why would you compete with something that you benefit from? It just, well, I take that back. Because I think the times where it competes, they're not working as a team. It's his and hers. Yes. Yes. So it's my bank account. Your, your bank, bank account. account. Yeah. You know my assets, your assets. My car, your car. So it's divided. So a divided household can't stand. So if you've already divided your household, then why yeah. would you think it will become one? It just doesn't. You're not, doesn't, you're, not unit, you're not moving as a unit or as a team. So it's, it's going to be divided. I've never moved from a divided mindset. You know, this is us. This is our family. This is we are. You know what I'm saying? There is no I. Yeah, Cause I, what benefits me benefits us. What ben vice versa. We homeless. We all homeless. Correct. We up. We all up. We down. We all down. Amen.
I felt like I just went to church. So what's the what's that? What it um? So we did what compromising. I forgot the other two. You went on so so long. I, I forgot that. I should have. You did I, business. I, I should have been did taking notes. Friendship. No, I'm talking about the marriage. The things for a strong marriage. Communication. Communication. Compromise. Compromise. I say trust. Trust goes in there because if you don't trust a motherfucker, y'all ain't going nowhere. Well, if you don't trust someone, you shouldn't be with them. If th- this is how this is how I know if I'm gonna let you come to my house, this is how I let I know. Well, if this is how I know if I trust you or not. If I if I second guess giving you my address because I don't I don't let people come to my house because I don't like that information out. His family members has never has never been to my house. If I question this girl, we was cool, and she went to jail and she asked because she write me. And I second guess giving her my address. And I said, then if I, and I had to really have this conversation with myself and say, well, if you second guess and giving you, giving her your address, then that ain't somebody you should be dealing with. And I cut ties. Amen. Cause I had to really sit there and be honest with myself, because if you don't want to get this person, your address, you're telling yourself you really don't trust them. So why would you continue in a relationship with them? It doesn't make sense. So if you feel like you can't trust someone, why would you want to be with someone or around someone you can't trust? Because you you could trust somebody with your life, but you can't trust them around your homegirls or something. I mean, that's the type of trust we're talking about. That don't even make sense. Like that's just like uh uh, uh oxymoron. Like you would you you would trust them with your life. But not a, like that. Didn't, that didn't even make sense. If I don't trust you, like, <laughs> no, that. Yeah, I don't even know what you're saying. It's like if I don't trust you around my friend. I'm definitely not going to trust you around or trust you with my life. That like, yeah, that 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 just didn't make sense. Because it's, it's different levels of trust that people go through, and it's it's like some some things some people would certain, do certain people things I don't tr- I wouldn't life. expect to trust you oh, yeah. with my life. Let's say for example, you may you may trust someone based on their character, right? You may you may trust like there's friends like I don't I I wouldn't trust them to jump in front of a car for me, right? And there's some I know. they'll jump in front of a car for me, right? So I think you got to look at it like that too. But if your mate's not willing to jump in front of a car for for you, yeah, that ain't... Yeah, that's crazy. That ain't where you want to be. Would you jump in front of the car for me? Of course. I think you would too. Yeah. Of course. And it, and if and if it ain't that type of trust with a person you're dealing with in terms of a relationship... That, I don't want to say that's trust. That's just... Uh, that it's a different word for that. I, I wouldn't say that's loyalty. That's trust. You know what I'm saying? Not even that's, loyalty. That's a different word. Somebody that don't want to see you, know you hurt. Saying? Yeah, it, protective. It's, yeah, because that can't go in the category. Trust. Okay, so when you say trust, what do you mean? I, I'm, I mean, when you're talking about trust, it's like um, I could trust. I could trust this dude that he he means the best. He won't try to harm me, but I can't trust him around that crack. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna make the bad decision. So it's like it's, it's different things of a, a person. I'm saying categories. It's different okay, categories this is what in I'm the say. trust thing this because is, some people have a downfall on or what they we say all have clutches downfalls. on certain things that will strongholds. But they yeah strongholds on certain things. But they a good person on this end. So it's like it's different levels of trust in each category. You know, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's different categories. Okay. Well, I will say this. My trust goes as far as how what you would do with yourself. If you're not a good steward over your money, I'm not going to trust you with my money. If you don't have integrity and self-respect for yourself, I'm not going to expect you to have respect for me. That's just a principle. The way a person carries themselves and the way they respect themselves and what they will do and won't do for to themselves is a key indicator of what they will and won't do for you. And that's, and that's just a reality. I agree with that. That's a good good example on that. Then what about loyalty? Of course, that's a key factor. I think I I guess that falls in the same category of trust. You think? Mm. What? No. 
Loyalty, trust, trust and loyalty. Mm, Scratch each other back. I don't know. Loyalty goes hand in hand. Of course, a person should be loyal to you. Um, And that's in any relationship, right? Because without no without loyalty, there is no trust. But sure. that's that's a, that's that's uh that's character. Um, it's either you're a loyal person or you're not. That's just a part of your makeup and who you are. Um, something you can't learn about. Something you can't. Um, it got to be in you, not on you. Mm-hmm. So building. Um, we going back to building. Family wise is is building as let's talk about building your kids up to be productive foundation productive. God says adults. the word says, train up a child in the way they should go, and they will not depart. They will not depart from it. So foundation, I believe any foundation when raising kids. I mean, everybody has their own way of their foundation, but I believe the a sturdy foundation for your child is God. Do you believe this? It's a failure of raising the kid what do you mean like do you get to a certain point in life and like damn we failed or is it like a forever continue i think parents is ongoing it never stops i don't care when your when your kid goes from elementary to middle school from middle school to high school from high school okay let me let me cut you off because this is just popped in my head um because we was watching um jeffrey dahmer Mm mm-hmm at a, at a moment, his dad, his dad was still like, what? what was, he, he felt still, like a failure. He felt like he felt his son, which I mean. Well, I think that's because if you see your kid killing animals and doing stuff that could be potentially, you know, a sociopath and you ignore. I feel like when you see things that your kids are doing and you ignore it out of being in denial then you failed them. But I also understand too, you could be the greatest parent in the world, do all the preventative measures, and but you still gotta understand your person your kid is their own person with their own brain and mind. They're gonna make their own decisions, just like a spouse. Just because you married to someone doesn't mean you control their decisions and what they do. They're an individual at the end of the day. So would I say, oh, you know, if my kid did a certain thing I felt as a parent, no, I gave them the information, but they're still God doesn't have puppets. And he doesn't control us. He gives us a freedom of choice. So if God cannot control us, what makes you think a parent can control their child? But do you think Jeffrey's a failure? No. Okay. Yeah. I don't know Jeffrey. You know, I don't. If if Jeffrey did everything, he's a mass killer. Wait, is his dad? Wait, who's Jeffrey? The killer or the dad? The killer. He don't have kids. What do you mean? Oh, do you mean the parents the, failed Jeffrey? No, because I mean, as a parent, you. As you get to a certain point, as your kids get older, we like, damn, you got to come to the realization of. I feel like he's this. just a failure. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't say yeah. he's a failure. I would say something is broken to get you to the point to where you would want to kill somebody. Something is something is in you that is broke. There's something wrong for you to just be like, I want to kill someone. But does that is that a reflection of his parents? Absolutely not. Yeah, I was just trying to set you up because I I don't believe he's a failure. I don't believe no human being could be a failure. It's just the lessons they learn and the path they went down. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't they say a wrong failure. Decisions. Yeah, I was trying to add you on to a world so I could make a point and look good on the podcast, but you didn't. <laughs> you didn't fall for it because I don't think anyone's one, a failure. Because I, think I, I feel like flaws. one sin is not greater than the other, which a lot of people feel like it. You know what I'm saying? But, um, no, lying is the same as murder. I yeah, mean, so, drinking. God says no sin is greater than the other except for blasphemy against God. So sin is sin. And I think we categorize sin, but and that's to make us feel good. Well, I didn't murder someone. Yes, Why did, but yes. it's like, but you drunk, you lying, you stealing, you fornicating. You, I think we all have flaws. So to basically think our flaws is 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 better than someone else's, God sees it all the same. So it's like we judge it and we put it on levels to make ourselves look like a better person or, you know, less uh, of a sinner. But it's like, no, it's all in the same boat. You know, we we can't judge someone and say they're a worse person or a failure when we have our own flaws. We are all flawed. Right. No one is walking in perfection. And they, there may be some people out there. 
I'm not saying it's not because I mean, if you, if you could go without sin for a minute, you can go without an hour. If you can go without sin for an hour, you can go for eight. If you can go without eight, you can go for a day. If you can go for a day, you can go without a week and so forth. So I do believe there are people that don't sin. However, I think we are all capable of sinning and we are all flawed. So to basically cause someone a failure is to me arrogance because what makes you greater than them? Because at some point you made a bad decision too. I know. That was a whole lot. Cause and I don't. It's like you breathe now. That's when I get passionate about stuff. <sighs> I don't like now. when I. I think. I, I think we're people. I see. No, I see people I, as people. I, I believe we all everybody people. a sinner, and because at the end of the day, you well, just, everyone was born into sin. It tells because you because it's, it's people want to play. You can't. You can't. You can't go into the mind of somebody, and I think that's where the safe ground because you could probably, you could, your actions might not show out here, but. People can't get into your mind. And certain thoughts you be thinking and stuff, that you know what I'm saying? I, I think everybody be sinning. So I don't think everybody be sinning. I think everyone has sinned. I say be sinning. They be sinning. No, it's probably some people out there. You know, like, I'm not saying like, with, without, I'm, ooh, I'm without even, sin even because I'm not. Be like, oh, but don't, it may don't be come some... to church like that. Why? If your ass shouldn't be looking at but her listen, booty. Shit. But listen, but listen. Job was without sin. Noah was without sin. There were people in the Bible besides Jesus that without that were without sin. That's why the devil wanted to try Job because he was without sin and asked permission to go try, try Job. But this is my thing. I've never met a person, but I'm not going to say everybody sins because I do believe that you could walk without sin because before any sin, it's a choice and it's a thought. The thought came before the sin. So you consciously decided to do what you're so going to you do. You know what I'm saying? The thought can't be a sin. The only thought that's a sin is lust. Is when you're looking at someone and lusting over that. That's the only sin that's so a thought. What about me? I'm, I'm, if I'm I thinking think about, about killing you, ass and that's not a you. sin. God says, "Be angry, but sin not." What He's saying is, I know you'll have emotion. I know so you'll it, feel so a certain it, it's way. It's okay for me to think about killing somebody, but not to be thinking of lusting. That's that seems contradicting. To okay, yourself, like. listen, 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 listen. There's a difference, right? If I get angry and I'm like, "Oh, I want to hurt them," right? And I'm visualizing in my listen, head what I'm about to do know, and everything else. I hate when people ask me a because, question but man, don't want to listen you. to the answer. And then I'm like, "I'm not gonna go there," right? Because I'm a human. But the moment I fester on that and I allow it to be to form and to keep, then it's like, okay. Because now you're, you're you're allowing that thing to linger. But nobody in life can tell me that they haven't got angry and had a thought in that moment. Now, if a week from so now, say, you're still thinking sin. about... No, it's not. So how is you thinking about lusting is a sin? Because It's a thought. The same thought of, of being okay. angry and okay. wanting to fight somebody. Okay. It's like, how's, how's that different? I don't understand that. You, okay. So Let's think of lust. Lust is an automatic sin, but me sitting here angry and pissed off how I'm visualizing how I'm going to murder somebody, that's not lust because it's not brought into action. But lust, but I mean, lust is. Please clarify that. Ask God. Exactly. That's no, what I'm saying. No, but listen, See, because... When you're lusting, now you're visualizing, you're visualizing it. You, you, you're having you're sex it. with someone. You, you, no, you can lust over sex. murder, but, 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 but you could probably, you but you could probably lust over murder. If you that, sitting here planning saying. it and, and thinking about saying. it and, and going, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying I got mad like, ooh, I want to pop this person. But I'm like, I'm not about to do that. That's not, God says be angry, but sin not. So he's not talking about the feeling. And he's talking about the action, but lust can be lusting in many ways. You know what I mean? The guy said, "What well, um, be lustful, but don't lust." What? God, it, they don't say that. Now you just making up <laughs> stuff. It does not say that in the Bible. <laughs> oh, 
I don't know, y'all. Y'all, y'all what y'all think about that, man? I don't know. It's, it's, if you visualizing, then less of matter is is different, or is it the same as visualizing the murder? Somebody, you know, like definitions. You know what I'm saying? So, so it's let's like, let's let's get the the definition. Because people really visualize and play out murders. I mean, look at these serial killers. They, 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 it fester in their mind first. This is and this is what I'm saying. Oh, a, a very strong sexual desire. So what about a very strong murdering desire a very strong other desire this is the thing i believe i think if you think on something too long you might start acting it out so i don't think you should allow your mind to basically so they um, should reword the bible because if you fester on something no matter what it is i think it should be a sin because it's gonna play out that's i'm not gonna say, say i'm not gonna say it's necessarily going to play out i'm saying it could be potential that it will play out I think you you need to take control over your thoughts. I think many times we we do lazy thinking and let our thoughts, you know, basically control us versus we control it. But the thing is, I'm going back to saying I just think we need to humble ourselves and regardless of what someone's doing, we're no better than the next man regardless of their sin because we're all sinners. Well, I ain't going to say we're all cuz I ain't met no one is perfect. But I'll give people the benefit of the doubt it is. Some people walking, it ain't sinning. But at the same time, I just don't think we should look at other people and be like, oh, they're a failure. They're they're very, but you know what? Just like I said in the last podcast, talking to my little cousin last night, and she said, you know, sometimes people walk in on a version of you and then they, they, they basically sum their opinion based on that version or that chapter. And I think that's a reality. Because that was that version. Is that man still alive or is he in jail? Did they persecute? Did no, they? I don't know. I didn't keep up with it. So him. this is my thing. That may have been that version. We don't know if his life changed or whatever when he was behind closed, you know, behind when he was incarcerated. Well, I think he is dead. They killed him. Oh, I don't know. So my, but we don't know if his life changed. That was a version. Not to say that it was right. Not to say that it didn't hurt people. But at the same time, we all have versions. We all have bad chapters. We all have chapters that we wish no one can see. We all have chapters that we probably want to take back, but it's a chapter. It's not our whole story. And then on that note, we're going to wrap this one up. Don't stay stuck in your chapters. Need to close it up. Become a better version of yourself. Build a sturdy foundation by working from the inside out. And when I say working from the inside out, the only way you can ever have a sturdy foundation is working on you first. Until next time, as I always say, continue to break cycles.